Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I am here with a tutorial. This one is a super, super fun look that I really, really, really love. I love bright colors. I don't tend to wear them in my clothing very much. I'm a very neutral clothing kind of person. I wear mostly all black pretty much every day. But in my makeup, sometimes I really, really love to do a really bright, fun, shocking makeup look. And this one I think is somewhat wearable. You can obviously do like a more wearable eye with this lip or a more wearable lip with this eye. But I love this. I think it's so much fun. And I hope you guys enjoy this tutorial. And if you want to see how I got this lip, then just keep watching. So I'm going to start with my Christian Dior Creme de Rose lip balm because these lips are not having it. Fun fact, when we were in the hospital, when Axel was being born, Taylor forgot his chapstick, and so he used this the whole time. <laughs> I was like, it's plumping and you're gonna smell like a flower. He's like, I don't care. I'm using Paracone MD Face Finishing Moisturizer. This is one of my favorite moisturizers ever. It's like a gel cream, so it's not greasy if you are oily, and it's really, really hydrating, so it's good if you're dry too. Next, I'm going to prime my face. This is the Nivea Men's Sensitive Post Shave Balm. Everybody is using this thing now, oh my god. I had heard that it's not really good for oily skin, um, and since then, a bunch of you have commented and said, oh, I have oily skin and it's really good, but also a lot of people have said, yeah, it's not good for oily skin. So if you have oily skin and you want to try it out, I'd say go for it. It's really cheap, you know, there's not a lot to lose, but um, but I'm hearing like 50-50, like some people with oily skin really like it and some hate it. So I don't know. I really don't know what the answer is, but I say for anybody, it's definitely worth a shot. Cause like I said, it's so cheap and it seems to do a really good job. So Taylor says my hands look like they went through a wood chipper, which they kind of do. It's winter. I wash my hands a lot. I'm a germ freak. So for my foundation, I'm going to use the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. This is the new version of their HD foundation. And um, if you've been watching me for a while, you'll know that I actually work for Makeup Forever. I freelance for them. So I've had a lot of experience using this foundation. This is a brand new bottle, so I just just now opened it. Um, but this foundation is incredible. If you ever used the old formulation, this one is even better. It's basically just more natural looking and more... I don't know, I think it's more comfortable on your skin, you know what I mean? The original HD was meant to be HD, obviously, and it was kind of, you know, meant to look really good on camera, meant to look like you're not wearing any makeup. This one is just that exact same thing, but taken up a notch or five. This was formulated under a 4K camera lens, so basically they had really, really high standards when they were looking for what it actually had to look like up close on your skin and it really really performs it's amazing i've used this on so many different people different skin tones they have a huge um shade range which is amazing if you guys have not tried this foundation or the stick version definitely go and do that it's honestly it's one of the best foundations i've ever used um makeup forever actually makes a brush i think it's called the 108 if i'm not mistaken um, that is meant to go with their liquid foundations and especially this formula and it's really really nice their brushes are synthetic and the 108 does a really good job of applying foundation really beautifully um, it's not like a regular foundation brush and it doesn't streak or anything but if you've tried this foundation and you don't like it with a beauty blender or any other brush that you've used try it with that brush you know who has the best glowy skin ever and maybe it's just like makeup I don't know but um I watch Sandra Deluxe on YouTube she's on Instagram too first of all she's gorgeous and she seems like the sweetest human being in the whole world but her skin go search her channel right now I can't even contain my excitement about how amazing her skin looks like it looks so stinking good. It makes me depressed about my skin. So now I'm just using my Laura Mercier translucent <laughs> translucent powder. I like to set my foundation with this, but I kind of use it to layer my foundation too, like I was saying. Um, once you put this powder on, especially with a damp beauty blender, I, I love the way this works. Um, I like to sometimes put another layer of foundation on if I'm wanting like a really full coverage. So for my under eyes, I'm going to use my Laura Mercier Secret Concealer. I use the shade 1. It's got just enough peachiness to where it's going to cancel out any 
like bluish tones underneath there. So I'm just applying that under my eyes. I'm being so good and using my ring finger, but oh my gosh, my ring finger is tired now. So I have to use my middle finger. <laughs> That's why I do that. I always get yelled at because I know you're supposed to use your ring finger, blah, blah, blah. And I'm following that up with my MAC Pro Longwear Concealer. Um, this is the shade NW20. I'm just going to apply that with my finger. I think it's time for a new beauty blender. Mine's getting like cracks in it. Oh, I'm so sad. So I heard, I think it was Nikki Tutorials, saying that you can clean a beauty blender with just a bar of soap. Is that true? That girl knows everything. But if that's true, that's gonna save me so much money. I buy those stupid little bars, you know? But I also use them for my brushes though. I don't know if I could let that go. And then I'm just gonna take that same powder that I used for my face and set my under eyes with that. From having allergies and just like messing with my eyes so much my whole life, the skin under there is just really wrecked. So setting with this powder really helps to keep that makeup from kind of settling into those lines. Nobody wants that. So in an effort to be a little dewier, I'm gonna use this Jouer Cream Highlighter. I apply it with my Beauty Blender, just kind of like the butt end of it. And it helps with the glow factor a little bit. It's pretty subtle, I feel like, but I don't know, I like it. I'm gonna use something different than I usually do for my eyes. I usually use a MAC Paint Pot, but I'm gonna use this. It's by um, LA Girl, it's called their Pro Primer. HD High Definition Eyeshadow Primer. I've never used it before, um, but they sent this to me and it looks like, I mean, it's just kind of, you know, a neutral shade. It feels really creamy and nice. So we'll see how it holds up. So I'm going to just lay down a little layer of this powder here just to make everything nice and smooth for when the shadows go on. I find that it's easier to blend that way sometimes. Next, I'm gonna take the shade from this Battle Ash for Socks Boss. Socks Boss? What? Sauce Box palette. This one's called Cinnamon. And I'm just gonna stick that right in the crease area. I don't necessarily need to bring this down onto my lid, but it doesn't really matter if it gets on there either. And I like this combination with, you know, kind of like the chickadee color and then something a little bit more brownish or like kind of earthy in the crease, just because you can literally put any color on the lid after you do this in your crease, after you kind of set it up like this. It's just gonna complement any color. It's really neutral. You could do, you know, earth tones really easily. You could do something a little bit more colorful really easily. So I like this and when I don't know what I'm gonna do with my makeup, I start by doing this and then I just kind of like grab a color to throw on the lid. And it's really easy to kind of get out of like a creativity rut with your makeup, if that makes sense. Okay, so going with this green, it's called Enigma in the same palette, and I'm going to put that on the lid. I love this color green. You guys may know that already because I use it. I feel like I use it a lot, and even if I don't, I like think about using it a lot. I love how pigmented these sauce box shadows are, and the colors in this palette are just I love them. They're so me. It's not even funny. And I just like to go back with that cinnamon shade on this guy and just kind of blend everything together a little bit. Next, I'm going to highlight my eyes with this uh, just champagne pop highlighter and I'm going to do my inner corners as well as my brow bone. So for my lids, I wanted to add a pigment. This one is Old Gold by MAC, and I'm just... Aww. And I'm just going to use this Too Faced Shadow Insurance Glitter Glue beforehand. Um, I find that this works really well for keeping your pigments in place. So I'm just going to dab that over the green that we've already put down. And this stuff dries pretty quick, so, so it's a good idea to go in with your pigment soon after you apply the glue which I am not ready for. <laughs> so this pigment is very similar to the shadow that we used itself, 
but it's much more like intense. See that difference? I feel like it looks a little bit more like holographic or something. I don't know, but it looks really, really cool. I used to use a pigment in every tutorial that I did because they're so easy to use, but people forget about them or I forget about them a lot or they're just really intimidated to use them. So I want to definitely incorporate more pigments. I'm gonna take this uh, eyeliner from Jane Cosmetics. I use this for my waterline all the time and just smudge that down there. I think earlier I was saying Enigma when I used the green color and that's wrong. The green is called Electro. The color I'm about to use here is Enigma. I was reading the back of the palette totally wrong. Silly, silly me. So I'm just going to take that shade and smudge it out with the liner down there and just kind of mix that black with that um, bronze shade. I'm going to take that same eyeliner and just do a little bit of the upper lash line. I'm going to smudge it out and make it a little bit like smudgy. <laughs> so it doesn't have to be perfect, but I'm just not feeling a wing today, so. And I want my lash line to be darker because I like the look of false lashes when the lash line's really dark. So many of you on my favorites video um, said that you guys watched Jane the Virgin too, and I'm so happy that you guys all watch it. I seriously love that so much. We finished the first season already and we're like, so the first season is on Netflix. The second season is on Hulu, but there's two episodes of the second season that are not on Hulu. So we're like trying to find those two episodes. I think we're just gonna have to buy them off of Amazon and watch them um, so that we can watch the second season cause we're like having withdrawals. Moving on to lashes, I'm going to go with the Punk Volumizer Mascara that was in our boxy charm a couple months ago and I'm going to apply that to my lower lashes and my upper lashes. I think my lower lashes are almost as long as my upper lashes. That's really annoying. So I've applied false lashes and I'm going to move on to my lip color and then I'm going to do my cheeks last, I guess. <laughs> I always block out my lip line with my Kat Von D Lock It Tattoo Concealer. I'm in the shade Light 18 and I just use that to kind of cancel out my lip line so it looks really cute at first. That will hide my lip line and kind of allow me to wear colors that I wouldn't be able to wear otherwise. My lip line isn't very defined and so sometimes colors just appear to like kind of bleed into the rest of my face. I'm not sure how to explain it but um, I found that I can wear pretty much any lip color and it can look really, really good as long as I do this first. Oh, by the way, this is a NYX liner in Plum. I really love the formula of these NYX lip liners. The roll-up feature is not my favorite thing. Um, it's nice and creamy though, which is what I really love. So I have this Bite Beauty, it's like a double-ended lipstick. On one end is a shade called Palomino, and it's this bright pink, but I'm going to use the one on the other end, which is this shocking purple, which I love. This look is not, it's like very twiggy, kind of, I don't know why it reminds me of twiggy, and not very holiday-ish, but you know what, that's okay. So I'm just going to apply this, I've never used this shade apparently, uh, to my lips. Oh. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. I'm going to just bronze my face with this Girlactic bronzer. This is the shade Cabo. This is like my go-to for quite a while now. Girlactic makes really, really nice bronzers, guys. I've said that a million times before, but it is true. Next, from the Morphe 9B blush palette, I'm going to use, oh, I'm going to use, what am I going to use? I'm going to use this guy, and I might mix in a little bit of that guy. Then we're going to highlight again with Champagne Pop, and I'm just going to sweep that over the top of where that 
edge of the blush is. I'm also going to contour my nose just a little bit. Same bronzer as I used on my face. So that is it for this really bright makeup look. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. I had such a fun time inventing this makeup look. I just kind of came up with it as I went along. You guys probably know that's what I usually do for my tutorials. But yeah, I hope that you guys can see that even though this is really bright and like seems intimidating, it's actually made up of just a bunch of really, really easy steps. So that's kind of one thing that I really, really want to communicate here on my channel is that Literally every makeup look is broken down into really, really easy steps. Um, it's just a matter of taking those steps and getting familiar with kind of like how to build the look, if that makes sense. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye!